Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome back to the Conflict of Nick channel. I'm your host Nick, and today I'm going to be bringing you another part of the basics explanation series um, on the Conflict of Nick channel explaining all the units in Conflict of Nations. Now, I just want to say I'm super happy that the channel has been doing as well as it has so far. Uh, it's made me super excited uh, to make more content for you guys. I'm super glad that everybody's enjoying what I'm doing um, and that you guys support me. It really means the world. And so today I figured why not, even though I have a busy schedule right now, um, why not get a video out to you guys. So today what we're going to be doing in my uh, Kenya game is we are going to be going over helicopters after support and we're going to be skipping over fighters and going to heavies because they're both small attack trees um, and I thought that helicopters would be too small to do on their own and adding fighters would be really uh, long so these would be their own separate video and heavies aren't too big either so we'll just have those and helicopters in today's explanation so why don't we get started so the first unit we're going to be going over is the helicopter gunship now as you can see I'm the Western Doctrine and so this is going to be one of the doctrines that does not get the best uh, helicopter gunship so the thing about helicopter gunships these are purely anti-infantry gunships these are anti-infantry helicopters as you can see at level one they can do seven damage to soft targets that means infantry and turret artillery and other soft targets like certain officers uh, etc they're not meant to fight armor They'll, they're only doing two to tanks at level one and they're doing some damage to other helicopters now some things you'll notice is that their speed value is seven they get 15 hit points at level one and their fairy range is only 400 so that means they can only um, engage units uh, 400 meters from an airbase um, at level one they can ferry between airfields at a larger range and they are aircraft carrier base which means all helicopters can actually launch from helico uh, from aircraft carriers no matter their level um, and so they can actually be carrier deployed um, which is kind of nice actually it's somewhat useful um, to build a helicopter gunship, you're going to need an airbase level 1, and you're also going to need an arms industry level 1. And the best doctrine for these uh, gunships is going to be the Eastern Doctrine, where, and I believe this is correct, the Eastern gunships are going to get 20% more HP because they are rocking at max level, unlike the Western gunships uh, at level 7. The level 7 gunships are getting 24 hit points. Well, I believe the max level ones are getting 29 or 30. I think it's 29. And so that is the biggest thing um, compared to Eastern gunships that the EU and Western ones do not have is that they are higher level. Notice also that gunships get eight speed now at max level um, as an upgrade before this. They get stealth at um, the third tech level or level six, which means they can reveal stealth of ground units. And uh, one upgrade um, previous to this allows their combat radius to be extended to 500, and their infantry damage is now 12 apiece, and 4 to armor, and 5 to other helicopters, and they, they can do some to ships. So overall, they're not that bad. They're very good against infantry units. I would say use these, uh, especially early game. If you're a landlocked country or a country that's going up against a lot of countries fast, and you're... Um, like a country that has a small uh, amount of space like let's say Chad. Chad is a great country to go for with gunships because one it's relatively confined so you can launch all your gunships at attacking nations and some surrounding nations right away without having to build any more uh, airfields and not only that they're great against soft targets like I said and most nations early and even medium game or and long game will sometimes go for mostly soft targets so overall these things are not bad to have um they're good especially early game like i said and overall they're a pretty versatile unit and the only thing uh the only anti-aircraft unit that can actually engage these helicopters will be as discussed in the support video the mobile anti-air vehicle so keep that in mind the next unit we're going to be going over and this is one of the ones that i went for as kenya in this game and i'll explain why it's going to be the attack helicopter now completely apart from the helicopter gunship these are going to be your anti-armor and anti-vehicle helicopters as you can see at level one 
they're packing 8.5 damage to vehicles and 2.5 to infantry and 4 to enemy helicopters and 1.5 to ships. So, as I mentioned, these are not for infantry, these are for anti-armor. So these are going to counter uh, all vehicles, they're going to counter hard targets, and um, all support units besides tour artillery count as hard targets. So it's going to be great uh, when you're countering things like tanks, or multiple rocket launchers, or SAM launchers, because again, not many AA things can uh, target this. And ASF, you can avoid by having SAM launchers on your side, or ASF on your side. So overall, what these are great for, is they're great for uh, doing the job, um, and especially in this game, what I'm going for, I have uh, many 5 stacks of Apaches, and they are going to be great against Iraqs, multiple rocket launchers max level, and SAM launchers, because they can't hit the helicopters, and it looks like he's not using ASF. So these are going to destroy any armor or support units. Now, something to note. The best doctrine for this helicopter is going to be the Western Doctrine. The Western Doctrine is packing insane buffs. You're getting extremely um, more uh, damage input. I believe it's 20% more damage to vehicles that Western helicopters get, or Western attack helicopters. And also, your research levels are greatly reduced, so you can research these way faster than other countries can, which is extremely useful. Now, max level, we're talking 16 to uh, hard targets per helicopter, and 5.1 to soft, and 8 to other helicopters, so overall not bad. They are carrier based, as I said, and the only difference between them and um, helicopter gunships is that they require a level 2 airbase. These have a radius of 500, and they also have, interestingly, um, unlike uh, helicopter gunships, they actually have radar detection. These uh, Apache, uh, these Apaches can detect ground targets with a signature of high, which means vehicles, and they can also detect naval units, which uh, with a signature size of high, which means surface vessels. They go eight speed and have thirty hit points, so they're more tanky than helicopter gunships. Overall, these are going to cost electronics and components, unlike the gunships, which will cost you a lot of supplies and electronics. So these are going to be best when used in the Western Doctrine, and best when used against vehicles. Don't just go for these right away, see what your enemies are doing. A lot of times enemies and people like to go for armor and con or support units. So these are great for jobs like that when you're getting the job done against armored or support targets. The last helicopter we're going to be talking about today is the ASW helicopter, or the Anti-Submarine Warfare Helicopter. Now as said in the name, these helicopters are meant for anti-submarine warfare. They're meant for countering submarines. Now, at level 1, and keep in mind, this is something I don't really use it often because other things like MPA seem to get the job done so well. Um, but these are actually good in certain situations. So at level uh, 1, you'll see this thing doesn't do damage really against uh, soft or armored. It does barely any. Um, and you can see the only thing it really does good damage against is submarines. Um, this helicopter is packing 17 hit points, 7.5 speed value at level 1, and it gets a sonar range of 75. It can detect naval units with a size of low, which means sonar. It can detect fixed wing aircraft with a signature of high, and ground targets with a signature of high. It can reveal stealth to submarines, is carrier based, and has a combat radius of 400 at level 1. This is going to require components and electronics to build, and will require a level 2 airbase. Now, moving on to max level, each of these is packing 15 damage to subs, and not much more to any other things. The sonar range is going to be up to 100, and its operational range will be increased to 500 like all the helicopters. So really, the only times I know that I would ever use these are in special matchups, or if you're controlling a small body of water. Moving on to the heavy tab, now we're going to get into some interesting aircraft that have unique and very useful abilities. Just like I mentioned a minute ago, after talking about the ASW helicopter, we move on to the NPA or Naval Patrol aircraft. Now, one thing to note about these is that, also like the ASW helicopter, these are meant for countering submarines and ships. However, the ASW helicopters are not very good against ships. 
NPAs do a great job against uh, surface vessels and submarines. So, at level 1 and all the levels before or after, they're going to require a level 3 airbase and a level 1 arms industry. They're going to require components to build and electronics, and they're going to eat up uh, electronics every day. So, combat radius at level 1 is 1500. That is way better than most aircraft because these are heavy aircraft, they're meant to have a large combat radius, um, but that comes at the cost of them being slow. They At level 1 they have a 7.5 speed value, which is the same as helicopters. They have a sonar detection of 75 at level 1 and, and can reveal the stealth of submarines. They have a ferry range of um, 10,000, which means they can pretty much traverse the whole map to get to another airfield if you're going from airfield to airfield. And they're doing, like I said, 7 to ships and 5 to subs. So overall, not bad at level 1. Once you get to the higher levels, now we're starting to get serious. These can do 14 to ships per MPA and 8 to subs. So that means that if you have a 5 stack of max level NPAs, you're going to have 40 damage against subs and 70 to ships. And that's just extremely deadly in any situation. The only weakness NPAs actually have is, in my opinion, frigates. They have a speed value of 10 and 25 hit points each, and they have a 3.5 thousand um, attack range. These can basically uh, just traverse so much and cover so much land and ocean that it's just insane. It not only um, is this good about them, but it also gets a 200 range sonar detection. So you can detect any naval vessel in the range of 200. And that is an insane amount of range. Like you can see we have max level MPAs right here. And look how much range that is. It's just ridiculous. It's amazing that you can see so much. And if you have a wall of these, you can see things coming from a mile away. One other good thing to note about these is that they can launch two cruise missiles per MPA. So a five stack of MPAs can launch 10 cruise missiles. And that is amazing because it's extremely versatile against not only ships and subs, but can also be deadly to transports and also land targets even. If you have MPAs close to an enemy, you can launch cruise missiles. It's an extremely good unit to have. These are great in almost any situation, depending on where you are. If you're a land-based country and need to help your team out with uh, naval combat, NPAs might be a great option for you. It also would be a great option if you just want surveillance over the oceans around your land. Overall, this is one of the best units in the game. I would recommend it to anybody. It gives you good surveillance and also gives you good attack power against ships. Like I said, they're great against subs, destroyers, cruisers, corvettes, everything. The only weakness is frigates. Keep that in mind. The next aircraft we have in the heavy aircraft tab is going to be the AWACS. Now the AWACS is purely for surveillance purposes. This is going to be um, your surveillance aircraft, um, especially for late game when you're trying to see what your enemies are doing. This aircraft at level 1 will have a 1500 ferry range and have a 150 radar range. It can attack high targets of naval, fixed wing aircraft, and ground units. It has a speed value of 9, and it has 10 hit points. So this is not meant to be close to any uh, borders or enemy units. You want to keep this away and utilize the radar range. Um, one thing about this is that the airbase requirements are level 4, so it's going to be really expensive for the airbase. But they're overall not that expensive uh, in terms of the actual aircraft. It's going to be 750 components and 700 electronics. Now, when we get to the max level, we're going to see that the AWACS gets an astounding 300 radar range. It can attack ground units of high, which means vehicles. <clears throat> it can detect low fixed wing and rotary wing, which means it can detect helicopters and jets, and it can also detect surface naval vessels. This thing can scout, which means it can see the exact uh, composition of an enemy army and reveal stealth of aircraft in the view range and the sight range is 32. This thing is always going to have an attack range of 1500, and overall, this is a great unit for getting such good intel against your enemies. You can see just about anything. You can only see um, not a few things. You can't see infantry because they are low, and you also can't see submarines. 
One thing to note is that the Western Doctrine actually gets the best AWACS because it gets the best research levels. The research levels on this are greatly uh, reduced so that you don't have to research them too late in the game and you can have access to higher levels earlier. Going on our first branch off of all of these uh, units, we're going to have the Naval AWACS. Now there's not going to be much to say about this. The Naval AWACS is going to have the same attack range, it's going to have 225 radar range, 8 speed value, 15 hit points, and one thing about this that's unique is that it is carrier based. As in the name Naval AWACS, this is meant to be a carrier based aircraft and be able to traverse um, oceans and be deployable from a forward um, from a forward airfield on the ocean known as the aircraft carrier. One thing that's different about this AWACS compared to the uh, regular AWACS is that it can actually not detect fixed wing aircraft of low, but it can detect naval units of low, so that means it can detect sonar contacts. It's going to require 750 components and 7 electronics and still require a level 4 airbase Overall, I have never really seen this thing. I have never used it. A regular AWACS will serve this purpose just as fine because you really do not require an aircraft carrier because airfields can just be simply built and the 1500 range is super effective and usually all you need to have these aircraft. So I would not recommend really wasting any resources or time on this. As I said, the regular AWACS is not only going to do uh, the job just as fine, but it's going to do it better with the 300 radar range it gets at max level. The next aircraft we're going to be talking about is the Heavy Bomber. Now the Heavy Bomber is, no doubt, one of the most interesting aircraft I think I would uh, use in the game. This thing is going to require a level 3 airbase to build a level 1, and a level 1 arms industry, it's going to require components and electronics. And one of the things that's great about bombers is that they are great against soft targets. At level 1, they're doing 8.5 to infantry and 3 to armor and 3 to ships. They can launch 2 cruise missiles at level 1 and can operate 1500 from a nearby airbase. Now, one thing to note about these is that they are slow. They have a speed value of 10 and have a hit points of 23. The Western Doctrine is going to be the best doctrine for the Heavy Bomber. The Heavy Bomber is going to get, I believe, 20% more damage uh, to soft targets and also get 3 hit points more than other doctrines. So at max level, we're going to see that it actually gets some unique features. The Storm Position feature is going to mean that the unit ignores hostile targets entrenchment bonuses during combat, including bonuses received from bunkers. If you did not know this already, um, stopped units in friendly territory, let's say I have um, an infantry stopped in one of my cities here, you've got this 11th Infantry Battalion. And this 11th Infantry Battalion, because it's stopped and because it's in friendly territory in a city, it's going to have a 25% entrenchment bonus, which means it's going to take 25% less damage than it would if it was moving or if it was in enemy territory not defending. This storm position perk means this will ignore those entrenchment bonuses and do regular damage anyway. At max level, this is, uh, aircraft is doing 16 to infantry and 6 to hard targets and 6 to ships, which means this will do insane amounts of damage um, to soft targets and it will also be one of the things you use to counter buildings and civilians. Now you don't really want to counter civilians because that would lower your morale and it's also um, not a good thing to do. But it does 9 damage to buildings each and so you can do 45 damage to uh, a city, uh, a city's buildings if you have a 5 stack of these max level bombers. Um, and they can each carry 3 cruise missiles. These are meant for uh, inflicting infrastructural damage and hitting pure soft target um, stacks and doing a lot of casualties and damage to them. They get 33 hit points each, and like I said, the best doctrine for these is the Western Doctrine. These are easy to pick off with air uh, superiority fighters especially, because they're slow, and you can see them coming from a mile away, and SAM launchers will also eat these things up uh, really bad. So overall, they're not bad. Um, if you have an enemy across the ocean that you can't get to, and you want to inflict um, some casualties or infrastructural damage, this might be the unit for you if you want to do that. 
the last unit we're going to be talking about is our first stealth aircraft in this series. It's going to be the Stealth Heavy Bomber, in the Western Doctrine's case, the B-2 Spirit. Now, this bomber is going to be packing one less damage than regular bombers in the Western Doctrine. In any other Doctrine, this would not be the case, because they don't do as much damage as Western Heavy Bombers. This heavy bomber has some, uh, most of the same things compared to other heavy bombers. It has a combat range of 5,000. It can carry three cruise missiles, same as the regular heavy bombers, 5,000 um, ferry range, well, combat range at max level. Um, and this thing is stealth, so it has no radar signature. It's only revealed when. Um, attacking enemy units which means it's only uh it's only visible for a split second now one thing is that you can actually patrol these over enemy territory or neutral territory without declaring war because it is stealth nobody will see it unless they have stealth detection and the not declaring war means you can see over people's cities and see what they have now it doesn't scout but it's sometimes good to see if there's even something in a city. If you see a city's empty, you might want to go for it. It's better than not knowing. This is going to require a level 5 airbase and a secret weapons lab level 1 and an arms industry level 1. The airbase level 5 is only for stealth aircraft. And if you see these, people are going for this. This is going to do 15 damage to soft, 7.5 to hard targets, 5 to surface vessels, and it's going to do 10 to buildings and 7 to civilians. It has a slightly faster speed value of 11 and has 26 hit points. So overall, these are not a bad unit to go for. If you really want to be stealthy and still go for good heavy bomber runs, um, these are a good aircraft for you. Um, I don't believe that any Doctrine gets a buff in the stealth bombers, but unlike uh, regular bombers. Uh, which means that all nations will kind of get the same stealth bomber. These are going to require components and rare materials and electronics to build. So guys, I hope you're enjoying the series. Uh, I try my best to go over everything. It is a lot of it is a lot of explaining when you're explaining every unit in the game. But I'm enjoying this. I'm so happy you guys are enjoying the series and my channel. Um, if you like the video, you can like the video. Or say something nice about it in the comments if you disliked it you can comment why or you can dislike the video if you're enjoying my content and the channel why not consider subscribing um it always helps me out and keeps me motivated to keep making content for you guys and i hope you all are ready for the next video and the series to keep continuing um and i hope you're enjoying the videos in my channel so guys i will catch you in the next video nick out